Jim, we're here. Knife and Outdoor Enthusiasts and like. I'm C and this is Jewel. Just Jewel. And welcome to the QA with AK. The first of many, we hope. So today we're talking to Mr. Mike Bellicamp. Yeah. Owner and key knife designer of the knife brand V Knives. How you doing today, Mike? I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? I'm doing awesome. I'm doing good. How are you? Are you doing good? Uh, that's great. <laughs> All right. So first off, we'd like to thank you for taking the time uh, out of your busy knifing schedule to come and talk with us. Definitely. I'm happy to be here. Well, that's better than the last guest. <laughs> and to make them be here. Okay. So we'll jump right into some of the questions. So the first one we have for you, it's, it's very, I guess you would call it general, but we feel like it's a worthwhile okay. question. What got you started? in the knife making business? I mean, did you always know it was knives or yeah. you know, <laughs> other dreams? I'll give you a bit of a, a long and a short. Um, I was a car detailer in uh, Gainesville, Florida, and I didn't know anything about knives. Uh, I just knew how to polish stuff and make it look pretty. Um, when I had moved out to uh, Golden, Colorado, um, which you now knows where the spider co factory is um i was actually living in a trailer park and i was looking for a car detailing job at a ford dealership um, and i had gone to a place called lakewood ford and they said i would need to do a drug test and they would call me back um, so my father-in-law at the time had gone to a barber shop and i suppose there was a gentleman there named Vince Ford looking to hire people for his machine shop, his job shop, that he um, had a partial ownership with Sal Glesser, um, the owner and founder of Spyderco, um, and Vince's father, Ronald Ford. And, um, but I had no idea. I just saw a note on the kitchen table that said, call Vince Ford about a job. Well, I thought it was the Ford dealership that I had applied to. Then I called them and there was this funny sounding, uh, a broken English kind of voice on the phone, this, this really kind of almost half American, half British voice. Um, and I asked him where they were located um, I, to make sure it was the same spot. And he says, no, we're, we're over at this place, which happened to be right by the trailer park in a little uh, industrial area of warehouses. And I said, well, I said, I don't get it. There's, there is no Ford dealership anywhere over here. And he said, no, we're, we're not a Ford dealership. He goes, we're a, we're a job shop were Golden Manufacturing. That was the name of the company at that time. And I was 18 and I needed a job really bad. And he said, well, do you want to come down anyway and see what we have to offer? And I went down there and um, he hired me at $6 an hour. Pretty good money back then. <laughs> uh, yeah. And um, I asked him for seven, but he was pretty stuck on six. Uh, I ended up taking the job. And one of the first jobs was uh, running uh, these old bridge, Bridgeport retrofit uh, two axis CNC's and basically just pressing the space bar, you know, um, I didn't have to do much, but uh, we were making the power box for the artificial heart for um, the healthcare company in California called Baxter Novacore. Um, after a few, uh, a few lessons in how to press the space bar on a CNC, uh, they taught me how to bead blast these odd looking things that it, later I found out were backspacers for um, a Bob Terzola collaboration, a uh, pocket folding knife, which was a C19 and C15s. Um, and then they showed me how to do various things, drill holes. Obviously, if you work at Spyderco, you drill a lot of holes. Um, <laughs> Obviously. So, <laughs> so I learned my way around the drill press. Um, and just kind of did little mediocre jobs around the shop. And um, like I said, it was, it was a job shop slash knife factory, but it wasn't Spyderco yet. Um, later on, um, Sal would, would acquire uh, the, the lion's share and then eventually 100% of the partnership. And that was where um, it was renamed Spyderco Manufacturing Incorporated. And that was when we moved up to the big red brick building on Highway 93, which is actually 820 Spider Co. Way, where everyone knows mm -hmm. that that iconic building and factory. That's so much, there. so much more than I what I aspire to. Look at the to. machine shop. Yes, yeah. I, I started out. I dreamed yeah. being a share when I was younger. 
there is no you know, <laughs> car detailing or I'm going to start manufacturing. Nope. It was yeah. you, about you. You know, you know, you know, you know who all also. you skipped a drug test also. <laughs> Mohawk tire. You, uh, it was. Yeah. You, you, you no, know, none. you know who all you know who also wanted to be share when they grew up. I'm curious who. Sonny. Her son. Yeah. <laughs> her son. Her husband. But... <laughs> this is pretty close. Uh, what about you? Uh, what did you? What did you dream of being? Man, I just wanted to have a job. I don't think I really wanted a job. I don't think I had dreams like that. I think mine were all yeah. sports related or uh, yeah. athlete. Uh, You're the next. Yeah, something like that. Next, Mike jo Michael Jordan, huh? So all right, I I'm, didn't dream of being sheriff. That's what you wanted. Well, that's that's, all right. that's good. All right. On that note, we're moving on to our next question. So we have heard, Mr. Villenkamp, that you worked at many knife-oriented jobs. Throughout your life at places like Spyderco, uh, Fox Knives, Blade Tech, and now V Knives, is there any area of the knife business you like more than others, or do you have a least favorite? Um, yeah, I yeah I do. I have a least favorite, um, and I suppose it doesn't speak to the the industry as a whole, but just as far as the day to day operations, I can't stand accounting and bookkeeping <laughs> or any of the administrative. <laughs> I don't like the administrative stuff. I don't like to tell people to put toilet paper back on the roll. I don't like to inspect things to see if they're clean. I don't like to keep up with the way people dress. I don't, I'm, I'm not really good with HR, bookkeeping, or I, I have become accustomed to having to, uh, out of just sheer survival, do some of that stuff. And one is a lot of the administrative work, but, um, if it's me, I'm I'm more comfortable either behind a computer or a pencil and designing or inventing the next thing. I like to create things. I like to network. I like to talk to people. I'm a big time people person, um, and I like to invent and I like to design. Uh, the rest of it, you can have it. <laughs> yeah, I know there's some aspects of my job that I could leave. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. Solid, solid burn. See, good job. Good job. However, I think there are like, you know, worse things than sitting next to a stunning jewel like me. I think your mother-in-law sitting here instead <laughs> would be. Look, we're doing something positive. Let's not bring that up. Oh, uh, you want to summon her. <laughs> don't want to summon her. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Follow up. Do you think working at those places in your past kind of motivated you to start me knives or was it like your, your passion for the craft instead? It was a little bit of both, and it was a lot of bit of survival as well. Um, it's our, always a little scary to strike out on your own, um, especially if you don't have uh, a whole lot of uh, backing or a whole lot of people in your corner for if you fail. It is, a, it is a really tough decision to decide to go from having a guaranteed paycheck and a guaranteed salary and health insurance and all that to, to garner support and uh, investment capital and and really launch something that, you know, hopefully is going to survive. And uh, yeah, I, I learned a lot from every uh, every company I ever worked for. I, I would say the most would be Spyderco because I was really on the ground level of uh, some of the type of manufacturing that, that is so popular now, but was not very popular then. Sal Glesser, he is just a, a, a vault of knowledge. Um, he's a wonderful inventor. And uh, I learned a lot from him as well. Um, and I was able to teach some stuff at all of these places um, as well. Uh, Blade Tech, when I left Spyderco, Tim Wagner hired me on to help streamline their knife division and um, do things a little less custom and a little more production, um, which I had those talents from Spyderco. Um, the, uh, the Fox company wasn't necessarily an employment opportunity. That was more of a partnership. Um, I had asked the, uh, the Fratis over in Maniago if they had, and I had already done a collaboration for them called the Profili. And uh, I had asked them if they have a lot of sales in the USA. And they said, no, not really. I said, well, what about Fox USA? And that, that was where we had created this other company called Fox USA. After that company uh, partnership dissolved, um, and for various reasons, and I've won't get into yes. pros or cons either way, but um, we did dissolve our partnership after a time and we are still very good friends to this day. Um, and that was the point where, and I had several job offers, but I, I just, that was the point where I said, 
you know, maybe, maybe not everyone's going to agree with my way of doing things and my style. And at that point, yourself. Maybe, yeah, maybe it's time for me to do my own thing and prove myself through, to the industry, not to my boss. Yeah. I'm just here for all the free sweat. <laughs> That's why I'm here. Next question. What is your favorite knife of all time? Or better yet, you know, favorite knife growing up? It better be from the 90s. Oh, yeah, the 90s. well, it, it's, like yeah, it. well, oh my gosh. Well, I mean, everyone had a buck 110 when I was growing Everybody up. Everybody says uh, that, oh my gosh. My old, oh, well, they did. I mean, it was the most uh -huh. popular knife in the world back then. And uh, uh, and I'm, I'm friends with CJ and and those guys. I, I, I like I like buck knives and uh, I mean, you know, back then when I was a kid, of course, we're not talking about the 90s. I think we're going back to the 80s. But mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I could have a favorite. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of the ones I've designed are very kind of near and dear to me. They're like my little, you know, little brain children. And uh, but uh, yeah, I did have a buck 110. I think I was about, I want to say six years old when I got it. Um, yeah, and uh, my my big brother he got the buck one nineteen. That's the one that so I he had the yeah. yeah he had the big one and uh, yeah you were asking me about my favorite knife and I suppose when I my first knife I suppose maybe would be my favorite knife just because there's an emotional attachment to it because it was given to me by my uncle. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Well, I know my favorite V knives would have to be the Frontier Survival. Because it has the yeah. nice big blade. It comes with a super awesome box. I mean, the sheath with a built-in sharpener, dual purpose. I love that. I also like the Hermit Crab and the Kilobyte, which I yeah. actually happen to have here with me. What? Nice. I got, I got to show the people. Look at this. The... Look at this. Titanium bag. It's got the carbon fiber front, the Damascus blade. It's so nice. It's so compact. I love it. Now, what we would like to know is how do you start out designing something like this or the or the frontier survivor i mean what process do you go through when making a knife uh the frontier survivor um actually um was i, I got a lot of uh encouragement from um those old vietnam um survival combat knife that the uh, airmen used to have issued uh, like the old K bar and the Ontario Knife Company. Yeah, it's coming. yeah they know it's they, coming. And you'll see a you'll kind of see a similar design attribute. I put the uh, blood groove or the fuller uh, down the middle. Um, I I did change and and do the um, uh, what they call compound grind so that you had a hollow grind mm -hmm. there for a portion of the blade so you can use it for whittling, and then obviously a uh, a very nice stout very very thick uh, blade edge geometry so that it could be used for thrusting or for batoning. And uh, it was kind of a, an effort to upgrade and modernize that combat survival knife. So that makes awesome. sense to me. I, it, it, all that's great. It just I looks awesome. Thought, it has the, the box and it has the sheath that you can use. Mm -hmm. I like that. I actually thought he was going to yeah. be a folding knife guy and he was going to say police model. Oh, yeah. But that's all right. He's a fixed blade guy. No problem. I like that too. Oh, I, li I like the police model. Don't get me wrong. Uh, the only, the only uh, issue that I have with that specific design and and I, I like a lot of spider coast design. I, could, I couldn't imagine trying to have a grip on it if my hands were wet or if heaven forbid there happened to be that is my on only it. complaint with it too is it's just it's just too too smooth. I mean I like it. Yeah. But you know. I do too. So is there any tips that you have for users or any special tricks that you've learned over your time? Oh, that's a good one. I bet it is. Okay. You wrote it. I did, didn't I? <laughs> Yeah, what I tell people, and I see this all the time, especially working in customer service at Spyderco, people will let their knife edges get down until they're completely flat, almost like the spine of the knife before they give it any attention on the sharpening. And I kind of tell them it's, you know, it, it's almost like your, your car tires. You, you don't want them to get, you don't want them to get down so flat that you're riding on the rim before you figure out you need air in your tire, because mm -hmm. you got to you got to buy a new tire and maybe a new rim. Uh, the idea is to to always keep it in check, keep that maintenance going. So I tell people when you get home at the end of the day or when you get up in the morning, whatever, just run your knife through the sharpener once or twice and it'll always be razor sharp. I do the same thing with my kitchen knives. If you take it out of the drawer or out of the block or off the magnet, 
you give it a couple of swipes, you use it, you wash it, you give it a couple of swipes and you put it back. It's always razor sharp for the next person. You never have that old crap moment Don't where that. you're, you're having to grind and grind and grind. I mean, there's, there's people Squashing that, your tomato. Yep. You are right. Yeah. Yeah. You're and you're, you're just taking care of your, of your knife. Yeah. Uh, so it's like knives for blocks there. It is food for thoughts. All right. And keep it, keep it clean. Keep the lint, keep the lint out of it. You know, like, uh, you don't want those locking mechanisms to fail because you got, you know, seven <laughs> months of lint <laughs> built up in your pocket. Right? It's usually it happens. Yeah. And tape residue, all that, all that stuff. And a, a really great tip for tape residue, Hold on, WD-40. Use WD-40 first. It'll, it's just like goo gone. It'll take that stuff right off and then wipe it with alcohol. Oh, you have lots of that around, don't you? We got a surplus of that. So if you guys didn't notice, we do have Mr. Camp's 3V sharpening system here on our table. Show you guys, there it is, yeah. I have to say, we've heard a lot of talk about this sharpener, okay? As some would say though, talk is cheap. So we were wondering if you wouldn't mind, you know, demonstrating this bad boy for us. I'd love to, okay. So here's the 3V sharpener, boom. So it comes in this wonderful packaging, which I'm notorious for creating. Um, the, uh, <laughs> That's very modest. He yeah, is. It, uh, yeah, very modest. Uh, and I like it. Uh, you'll see it, it comes with a diamond, a carbide, and a ceramic three-step system. And then we also give you an extra uh, set of sharpening media, diamond, carbide, and ceramic. Um, as you know, when you are using ceramic, Primarily, you're going to get these um, these deposits here, mm -hmm. and I'm just going to rub my finger in there real quick so you can see that that carbon deposit from the blade steel. You'll see there's some carbon on the end of my finger there if you just kind of rub it. And you want to clean these every now and again with a Scotch Brite pad and a little Ajax or Comet. Okay. Now, when you do that, what you're going to do is you're going to use a Phillips head screwdriver. And you're just going to go in the back there. You're going to take these little arms off. I don't know if you can see me. I'm going to go ahead and have the camera come at me. Um, come you'll at take me, <laughs> you'll <laughs> you'll take these little arms off of here, um, and you'll just pull these tension pull, and then these will come up for you. And that's the same way that you set the angle. But I'll show you that in just a minute. Um, you'll pull these off. And then you're going to put your new set on and not even worry about that. And you're going to do your work. You'll clean these and then you'll just swap them out next time. I advise people to primarily keep it in that 40 degree uh, inclusive angle because most factory edges are sharpened at 40 degrees inclusive, especially a lot of the kitchen knives and especially the cheaper kitchen knives. If you do have that really thin, very well made, maybe a higher end kitchen knife, then um, then you might be able to uh, get get away with the 30. So you just want to make sure you're touching the edge and not the shoulder. It's two um, black rubber pads on the bottom. These are actually suction cups. So you'll just make sure that these are out far enough from the base that you can begin to get your suction here on your counter surface. It works for formica. It works for stone and granite and obviously glass. But uh, uh, several counter surfaces, if it's a little more porous, then you probably want to use a little water under it to get a better suction. Otherwise, if it's a wood surface or a bench out in the garage or something, we have these mounting holes that you can put uh, screws in. Um, so basically, uh, what we're going to start with is the diamond. Now, you should never have to use the diamond because if you're maintenancing your knife regularly, you should really just be giving it a couple of swipes. And you'll see them flex a little as I drag it through and catch that edge. You really should just be able to guide it through and use a few swipes each time you use the knife on the ceramic that you really shouldn't have to go to the carbide or the diamond. But if you have more damage to the edge, then that's where you can go to that diamond, carbide, ceramic. And you'll see, I kind of steady it and pull it through, okay? So, and if you have a, a weird angle here or you have a, a weird edge choil back here and, and you're missing that eighth of an inch to get it sharpened, then you can just angle the blade a little like that and you'll get in and you'll get that area. But really you only should have to use the ceramic on a new knife that you want to keep maintained. And it's a good sharpener. It does very, very well. I use it in my kitchen every day. Um, and that should keep it razor sharp 
I should be able to just scoot that uh, keratin off my nail, like so. Doing that. Yeah. Oh. Well, I'm I could do some other fun stuff. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I have seen that video, and I'm just glad you didn't test the sharpness like you did, you know, on your tongue. Yeah. I have watched that so many times, and I cringe each time. Yeah. No. Yeah. Two more. Two point two million views. <laughs> Really scary, scary. Give me yeah. A thing. yeah. No. Yeah. yeah, you gotta. So you want to put a knife on your tongue? You go right ahead. Well, you can. So you know, a, a knife doesn't cut anything unless oh, no. you ap apply, uh, unless you apply pressure and movement. So the whole idea with the tongue would be just like if you were doing this to see if a knife was sharp. I'm not cutting anything. I'm just kind of moving it sideways. You got a lot of nerve endings in your tongue, and so you can actually feel burrs on an edge with your tongue and it's really not that crazy of an idea i do uh, i did another video where i do it with my eyelids are you hearing this um, he's telling you to test yeah. your knife with your tongue no i'm not no do no. not i'm not <laughs> recommending it i'm not recommending it to anyone you know i call it what i do yes uh, but yeah always call me retainer but, <laughs> yeah you can, but it really is almost the same way as just dragging your thumb across the edge. You're just dragging the edge across the top side of your tongue. So we've reached the final segment here. This is where we get right. the, the viewer questions. Um, okay, let's go. We yeah. got a lady named Angel Parado from the YouTube yeah. who says, do you have any new knives or gear in the works? Valid question. You're I a rebuttal, Mike. I, I think I know her. I do. I do, and I have to also say I love the name Peridot. It's one of my favorite semi-precious gemstones, and I believe it's the birthstone for Virgo. Um, okay, that aside, that wasn't any part of the question. I just know her name's uh, Angel. I think it's, I think it's Leo. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. uh, is it Leo? I thought it was Virgo. Uh -oh. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, um, yeah, we have a the the whole John Norris thin green line Trailblazer series. We have uh, two new fixed blades coming out and a small, uh, larger fixed blades. And we have a smaller fixed blade that can uh, either have handles on it or you can remove those and use it as a skeletonized version. And that's called the Delta. That will be coming out in, I want to say May, just before the blade show. We have two brand new flashlights, one with a UV light on it so you can read ids and uh, uh check for fake money that kind of stuff um or you can use it like the black light in the hotel room i don't recommend it though i did that one time and i don't recommend ever checking the beds in a hotel room stay away from the beds uh, you'll, you'll, stay away from you, the yeah you're, you'll just yeah you're just gonna sleep in your car forever if you do that yeah. um yeah and then we have uh we have this guy this is cool this is a fillet knife we have coming out um this will float in water super lightweight um this is a nine inch and these are going to be nine cr i'm sorry these are going to be aus nine um and these are just super comfortable very lightweight they'll float in water so if you happen to drop it in the water it'll yeah, just we'll... float like that and you'll just see this red piece bobbing up and down um and then this is really cool too this has a a uh, sharpener built into the sheet as well so you can just yes. sharpen it like so yeah, and then you'll have a option of either using our uh, patented safe lock uh, through dots or uh, a Molly attachment for a vest. So this is, we're real excited about these. Oh, we also have a survival kit that we put together out of our big knife box. Everyone said they've been using them for survival kits. And so we were like, okay, let's just make a starter survival Smooth kit and then the you can add stuff mm -hmm. to it. I think I can give you guys a preview. I think I actually have a sample of it. The preview. Yeah, this is going to be a preview. And uh, yeah, we do. I have a he sample. sounds like us when we're trying to draw so, something out. And yeah, and now <laughs> just look, bring it. Now, there it is. Yeah. Now look at this. We did them in bright orange. Look so at this the is box. our. Yeah, this is our knife box in bright orange. Um, they're still waterproof. Okay, and you get all these goodies in here. You'll get a uh, you'll get a bright orange uh, uh, crab, uh, hermit crab in here, so you have a knife. And then you'll get a compass. You'll get a little um, uh, waterproof pill container. You'll get this uh, survival card here, which has got all kinds of little tools on it. Um, this little guy, um, and you'll have some instructions in there for that. You'll have a keychain 
LED flashlight, you'll have snare wire, you'll have a saw, you'll have uh, a rape whistle. Yeah, you get a magnifying glass, you get a sewing kit, you get a fishing line, uh, hooks and weights. I should be writing this down. Should be writing this down. Yeah. yeah you can... <laughs> oh, that's well, right. We're, we're definitely, yeah, well, yeah, you can always rewind. Um, and then you get a scalpel too. So if you have to do some little bit of field surgery there, wow. and then we're going to include a gauze pad and some band-aids and you'll get that hermit crab. And so, and, and with this, you, you get a lot here, but you also get a lot of room left over, right? So if you've got to put your wallet in there, you need to put something else that you would normally carry for survival mm, that what? someone else what? wouldn't. You, you could, could put some quick clot in there. It'd be perfect for you. You could quick, put quick, I you're right. No put some quick, quick clot. clot. <laughs> yeah. Anybody needs no quick box. clot, it's you, man. For one more viewer question. This one came to us directly okay. via email. So they ask, right wow, Mike, are you ever going to cut your hair? Oh. <laughs> No, I had short hair I, uh, a few years back. I'm actually picturing me in the catalog is with short hair, but I made a decision a while back to just uh, just keep on growing it. Can't beat that. That's right. I, I think about cutting, you know, my hair. I mean, ha have you ever seen Practical Jokers? Oh, gosh. Like, I have. Okay. Yeah, I have. Yeah. One of the characters, one of the challenge he loses, so all the other dudes pick out a tattoo for him, and he gets Jane Smith. <laughs> Which is Will Smith's son on his thigh. Yep. I was thinking about you know Jaden Smith shaved into my head, like maybe maybe both sides <laughs> to shake things up. That's all we got. Yeah, yeah, okay. I dare you. And then like and then like yo yo money in the back. Yeah, yo and exactly. then a dollar sign. Yeah, exactly. See, oh, he, he gets this. No, he has his wow. tattoo. He's like he's like he's been in my room. Crazy. Should we um, should we show the giveaway night? Show the starting yeah. new giveaway, guys. Going to be giving a atmosphere knife away to Atlantic so that they can give it away to one lucky person. One lucky winner. It's not you. This is the atmosphere. This was our flagship model when we started the company. You get that beautiful titanium handle. It's a titanium nice. frame lock, uh, S35VN blade steel. You've got the... Uh, the classic uh, V knives titanium clip design there. This is a flipper frame lock. These are three sixty nine ninety five retail, and for one lucky person, it's absolutely free. And with that, we are also going to be giving a free sharpener. What? So you're looking at a four hundred twenty five somewhere around value. that neighborhood dollar value for absolutely free. Yep. I can't beat yep. that. Yep. So you guys got to like, share, comment, and subscribe on this video or anywhere we mention this giveaway. You'll be entered oh. in the V knives atmosphere and the three V sharpening system. That's all we got for you today. Um, I personally want to thank you. Yep. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. You're more than welcome. Thank you all. I had a great time. This was fun. We should do it again. We will. Anytime Maybe. you get new stuff, give us a call. All right. We're more than happy to showcase it. We will. I really appreciate it, guys. This has been a good time. And uh, yeah, everybody else, please like and share, get the word out. We're a relatively new company, but I think we're doing good things. Yep. So guys, make sure you got to like, share, comment, subscribe, as well as head on over to AK's blog and answer the trivia question there. You'll also be entered to win. Links in the description below. So thanks, AKers, for watching our first Q&A. Like always. I'm C. And this was Mike. <laughs> And this is Joel, <laughs> signing off.